Hi everyone, welcome to the Jungle Room Podcast and YouTube. I am sorry, we're not having any visual today. Um, my new camera is not working. And I have Johnny here. Welcome to the Jungle Room Podcast and that's <laughs> YouTube. That's on my end, I think. Oh, okay, I'm like, oh my God, I hear myself. That's not good. Um, I'm trying to turn it off. <laughs> it's on another laptop. Hang on. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Okay, there we go. I turned it off. Okay, good. Oh, okay, yeah. I thought it was me. I thought it was the um, program, <laughs> which, 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 by the way, the program I was talking to you about the other day, it's OBS Studio. OBS. Okay. Yes. And Thanks. unfortunately, there's the, the difference is, is that we can't use audio, which I'm really sad about. So we're going to have to go to Facebook Live after this because I did a little mini beehive. <laughs> oh cool yeah. I want to see it <laughs> I, you have to see it I'm like I did a little beehive in honor of you guys and now I can't show it off so <laughs> man if I'd have known I would have done a beehive with you <laughs> you are right well, do you have enough air <laughs> probably not probably <laughs> okay so this has been kind of a nightmare so I bought this new camera I was so excited I got the tripod I got all of this stuff and I didn't think it through. I thought I would, I should have known my limitations. I thought I would be able to just, you know, voila, have it all set up in my new studio. Um, but I'm missing a video capture device. Apparently those things are really important. <laughs> so apparently you just can't like hook up the camera and it's supposed to just work. That's what I thought. And I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be married in like the next hour. My husband's very frustrated with me right now because <laughs> I'm just like, do it. Just make it work. I don't care how it happens. Just do it. And yeah, it doesn't work that way. Apparently it's part of the husband duties. You got to fix everything no yeah. matter what it is. And then he's trying to explain it to me like bit by bit. And I'm like, I, you're speaking a foreign language to me right now. Like, I don't know what you're saying. You're talking about <laughs> all this electrical stuff. I'm like, I have big boobs and daddy issues. I'm not supposed to think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my Jackie gosh. Day. Yeah. Well, it is an exciting time in the jungle room studio. We have been trying so hard to get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube. I am very new to YouTube as far as doing video content. It's all brand new to me. And it's been a very, uh, very long lesson, I guess, because I'm still trying to figure out everything. But I wanted to have you here, Johnny, to celebrate this big occasion. And we're going to give away a $100 Visa gift card. Woohoo! Yes! Yes, I am super excited. So now, everybody listening gets a $100 Visa? Yes! No, no, no. I said giving away one. One oh. $100 Visa gift card. <laughs> Look, y'all, I tried. I tried. I know. I know. I think there were there was some people that thought that if everyone subscribed, we were going to give away $100 to all our subscribers. I wish I could do that, but I'm sorry. I'm a podcaster. I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even afford to have my face on YouTube right now. <laughs> <laughs> Your, uh, your video, your face broke YouTube is what you're telling me. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> that you know what, happen. my friend, that you have a face for radio, my love. <laughs> I know. I've been told that. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have, I see Kyle is here. I want to say hi to everyone. Kyle, I know you're you're the man. If you could go ahead and get, um, if you can send me that list that you were talking about of all our subscribers. We are going to put that sometime during the show. I'm going to put that in a magical little uh, computer database because I had, again, I didn't think this through. I thought I would just print out all the names and I would handwrite them and then I would put them in a jar. And, but I thought, you know, uh, that's a lot of people to try to handwrite. And then I thought I could print it out. And then I realized my printer was still packed up. So we're going to do copy and paste and do an electrical. <laughs> <laughs> an electrical drawing is that not electrical technical what is the word i'm looking for johnny 
I don't know. I was just thinking you're going to shock everybody. Whoever gets shocked, you're the winner because you said electrical. And I, I know. I was like, like you can keep uh, electrical, not electrical. So What's the word? <laughs> Technical or I? I don't know. I actually, I zoomed out. Okay. I was like you listening to your, or your, you know, listening to your husband for a second on the technical issues. <laughs> a virtual, a virtual drawing. That's the word. Thank you, Jennifer. See, <laughs> women do support one another. All right. Hi, Brian. Hi, Man, Dolores. We have to like to well, you know, the, there's only one person missing in this conversation, Donnie. Um, who? Who? My, my very best friend in the whole world. My co-host? No, no, not Elias. John Hugo. John Hugo! Yeah. Where is that John Hugo? I know. Find he him. keeps, like, dissing us. I think he ghosted us. <laughs> I can't get over that. That's hilarious. I know. I can't get over I have to laugh at myself because I'm such a doofus. Now, Johnny, you had a lot of fun last week and the week before you were down in Memphis for Elvis's birthday for Elvis's birthday week. And I wanted to have you on, on this live because I want you to share some of the things you experienced when you were down there, because you got to do something that not a lot of us have ever gotten to do. And that is, you got to go upstairs. Uh, yes. I went upstairs in the Memphis prison. I was arrested. Um, <laughs> Oh you, meant, oh, you meant, oh, I'm, you meant the other. Yeah, no. Graceland. Graceland. Graceland, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay, yeah. They had, uh, they wanted to think of something special. Speaking to Angie Marchese, uh, she is the Artifacts Vice President of Operations. It's a long title. I never can get it right. But her and Tom Brown, who do Hidden Gates of Graceland, they kind of got together and decided to offer a tour for a limited number of people. You know, they do this at, at Elvis week in August and the birthday celebration, they try to come up with something special. For example, uh, last year during this time, Priscilla and Jerry Schilling took people through to a tour, but it was very limited in number. So they kind of wanted to think of something, you know, of course that wasn't happening because of the pandemic this year. And so they came up with doing a hidden Graceland tour. And so I got an email that an opening opened up. And so I thought, well, I'm already here. Let's do it. I, so I did it. And there was only six of us in our little group. And so it wasn't like an actual tour because it was at nighttime. It felt like it was a home and you're just hanging out with friends talking. Um, Angie and Tom took us through and we just hung out in every room for a while. There was no set time. They, we weren't rushed through. When we were done answering, asking questions or being shown things, um, you know, which was cool because you would ask about something and they would go get it and bring it up to you and show it to you up close. And so just about everything in the room, we, you know, we asked about and I apologize to Angie Tom because I had so many questions. I'm sure the group was like, let's go, let's go, let's go, you know, but um, uh, I probably doubled the time <laughs> in that tour. Uh, but it was fun. It was a lot of fun. We learned about a lot of hidden stuff behind the walls that you can't see in the drawers. Uh, we got to do a photo op with Elvis's samurai sword, which was really cool. We actually even got to take our shoes off and walk in the jungle room and take a picture in the jungle room, uh, you know, just in our socks and our, our footies. Some, mm -hmm. some people wear the little booty things and so that was really cool. We didn't expect that. And so we were all excited about that and we had no idea that we were going to go into this next phase that we were going to get to see the upstairs of the racquetball building. Uh, Angie told us that, or I think it was Angie, maybe Tom told us, um, I think it was Angie. And so we were just like blown away. We were thrilled. We, were, we got to walk around in the jungle room, but so we go outside and we get into the jungle room and they tell us, of course. And so we're all excited. We go up one at a time to walk upstairs and I have figured out because somebody today posted a video from, I think it was ABC News from April of 1981 that shows, this is before the house opened for tours in 82, and it actually shows the upstairs of the racquetball building, a couple of pictures, not the whole thing, but a lot of it. And it looks identical to what it did then. 
nothing's changed. Um, Angie had told me nothing's changed. In fact, that area is used for to house marketing supply sometimes. Um, and so anyway, I was the last one to go up and Tom Brown actually went up with me and Angie. So it's me, Angie and Tom. And I think there was another girl from, I don't know if it was the marketing department or whatever up there. And so we walk into the left and when you walk in, there's an area, it's a little changing area with a sink, a, a bathroom, and this is for everyone. The left side of it upstairs uh, is for everyone. The right side was kind of Elvis's private quarters. And in the middle, there's a, the jacuzzi tub separates the two. And um, we walk into the left. It has even a green avocado toilet, the longer one, not the round. It's kind of narrow and long in that 70s look. The wallpaper was really cool, which is the same if you want to go on YouTube and Google ABC's 1981 racquetball building. I don't know what it's listed as. Um, it looks identical. Pretty cool. It was really high tech. Uh, expensive look in there. The faucets were gold plated. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that stood out, but it had a bunch of little cubby holes for you to put your clothes, little shelves with little squares. And that was all in a dark wood. Um, pretty, I mean, that it's pretty standard, you know, for a changing area, not real huge. And then you walk through and there's the little room that separates the two between the left side and the right side, which houses the jacuzzi tub. There is, there's a mirror on the wall. And so you would be sitting in the jacuzzi tub. You could see yourself in the mirror kind of thing. The whole wall was mirror. Um, and it was, it was an older one and, but it was cool. It, it's, it sinks in. It's got a little handrail on the left for you to hold yourself as you step into it. And, that was all that was in that little area. You walk into the right and it's Elvis's private area, which has another sink, um, which is gold plated. It has the uh, shower that you walk into. It's a stand up shower. It did have a sit down little shelf to the left. Once you walk in the floor, the walls, the ceiling are tiled with this purplish blue squares that alternate in different colors, which was really cool looking. It looks a lot better in person than it did in that video from 1981. Um, I, I remember thinking, wow, that was that's smooth. I like that. That's really cool. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, I would have it today. Um, then the, on the wall, there's three faucets that are gold plated. Uh, and I thought they said there was five. So I'm thinking they might have included the above head one because he had an above head. Uh, shower head, if I remember right, which in the 70s, I had never yeah. heard of that, you know. Yeah, I heard you talking about it on your live with Elias, and I remember thinking that was pretty, not a lot of people would have had that back then. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, and they were gold plated too, the, the faucets and everything, but I, I remember thinking that too, wow, that was pretty innovative, um, you know, for a stand-up shower like that, and, you know, it wasn't part of a bathtub or anything like they did in the 70s. Right. Um, so, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. And I don't know, maybe I don't know where they got the idea for that. If it was from other like locker rooms from other racquetball buildings, like public showers or kind of thing. I'm not sure. Or if that was his input, I, you know, I, we'd have to do some more research on that. Yeah. Maybe actually Drew can figure out how they came up with all those plans. Right, um, right. Well, yeah. let's say hello to some of our, I guess it's there are listeners because they can't see us. Um, Sally Hodell is here. She is the author of the book, Destined to Die Young. Have you read that yet? I have that book. I bought the book from her. She actually sent me uh, through email, but I'm one of those. I got to hold it. I got to have it in front of me. Me too, I, I yeah. Wanna, I want to mark certain things or come back yeah. to certain things. And it's just a lot easier. Uh, that's what I told her. And so I, I did buy her book while we were there. We had uh, some conversations off and on. We ran into each other several times while we were there and, uh, and got her to sign it and so forth. Very nice person. I can't wait to read it. Um, since I've gotten back, I haven't had a chance to sit down and, and do much of that yet, but uh, I, I can't wait to read it. Yeah, it's, it's a great book. I can't wait to actually get the physical copy because I read it um, on my iPad the first four times. 
And so I actually yeah. have read the book four times and I cannot wait to get, get it in my hands because I, I, I'm like you, I like to have the physical book. I'm weird. Yeah. Plus I like the keepsake of it too. Yes, me too. I like have more books than shoes. Can you imagine that? And I'm a woman and I have no. a lot of shoes, but my books are like, yeah. It's, <laughs> hey, it's, I will it's, tell you something I want to find out from Sally because she was also at the midnight uh, ceremony at the gates of Graceland uh, as as January eighth rolled over for the John Daly. He he does that every year and sings Happy Birthday. I want to know. I'm not sure. I think she might have been lip syncing. I th think she was lip syncing. She was standing next to me. Oh, I didn't hear Lord. anything. I, I want to find out. See, I thought you were going to ask something really serious. I thought, oh, this is going to be a good crush question. You know me better than that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're accusing Sally of lip syncing. Happy birthday. <laughs> yes, I am. Sally, come on. Well, I can't even hate on that because I'll be honest with you. I lip sync in crowds. <laughs> I don't ever sing out loud because I don't, I want people to like me. And if they hear me sing, they're never going to be in my presence ever again. I will tell you Kyle <laughs> sang. Kyle sang Kyle, very well. Yeah, Kyle has, he has a good voice. He can sing. Um, I heard I, him. He was in the vicinity. And I heard him very clear. Well, I'm glad that we know that you are the lip sync police. So <laughs> I am. I am. Um, Colin asked what the book is called again. The book is called Destined to Die Young by Sally Hodel. It doesn't mean that if you read it, you're going to die young, though. It's Thank not you like for the, clarifying that, John, yes. because I'm sure that was a concern of everyone. Yes, it's not like the movies you see nowadays. Oh, my goodness. All right. Yeah. So Doug Dickinson is here. Hi, Doug. Welcome. Mary is here. Hi, Mary. Um, you do have a question, Johnny. Kyle asked, how big was the upstairs total? Um. Okay. When you walk in and you... You see that main foyer, it's directly above that, like where the uh, pinball and the couches and the bar is. It's it's directly above that. And if you'll notice, there's a balcony up there and that there, where you can just sit up there and watch people play. Um, and so uh, it's probably about three quarters of the same size that is just below because there is a little balcony area, a little sitting area with, there was a couple of chairs there. And I did figure out what the chairs, I, because when you walk out of the shower area, uh -huh. Elvis has a, uh, or had a little sitting area. And that was pretty cool because it still had the red shag carpet from when the house was remodeled and everything. Of course, this came after that. Um, the building of this was, I believe in 76. But I guess he wanted to match everything or maybe they had some leftover. I don't know. But it had the red shag carpet, but just in his little private sitting area next to his bathroom. And it had some of the high bar stools. And I didn't catch at the time. Those were the bar stools that were at the bar counter from when Elvis lived there. Of course, they can't keep them there because people walk by there and people, you know, destroy them or tear them up or whatever. And um so those they took upstairs, but there was only two of them upstairs. So I'm not sure what happened to the other two because there was four in the picture in the 80s. So I'm who knows? I don't know where the other two are. They're probably there somewhere. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, hi, Neil. Welcome. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Wayne. Welcome, you guys. This is exciting. This is a, a good crowd, Johnny. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining. Um and for some of you that are in the Elvis, uh, I forgot the name of the group, a Sissy, Sissy's got a group, Facebook group, or um, there's a few groups that I know that the said Sissy gonna group. Play. What kind of groups are you in? Uh, no, no, not no. What did you say? You said Sissy group. Is it young? Is it young? Oh, man. What are you saying right now? Hey, I'm I'm gonna go and I'm gonna tell you because. I'm getting her. I can't. I'm drawing a blank. Kyle says that John Daly has those chairs. Does he really? He has two of those chairs. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. They match the same leather that is on the upholstery downstairs. So it was really nice leather. Nice, cool look. And I assumed when I saw him that maybe he got his hair cut and things like that mm -hmm. up there or something because yeah. they're kind of high. But apparently they were just the bar counter 
stools apparently or maybe they were extra maybe those were always up there and you know who knows i don't know i want to go back to sally's book really quick you guys again if you have not read this book or you've been on the fence to read this book i highly recommend you reading this it's going to change your perception of of how elvis died and it's written in such a way that there's a lot of research that was done behind it. This isn't something that she just, you know, grabbed out of her ear. She actually did a lot of research on it. And, and it really does explain a lot of the ways of a lot of the reasons why he acted the way he did. Maybe why he even got into drugs. It's a, um, it's amazing. It's, it kind of has made me more understanding of him. And I mean, I've always had a sense of empathy towards him, but I thought he was, very self-destructive because of the drugs. Now I'm starting to understand why. And that was, I, I credit Sally for that. And, you know, spending years of her life researching and then writing this book. It's phenomenal. I can't wait to read it. I really can't. I, I, after meeting her, she's um, very down to earth, very nice and very educated. You can tell. So I, I wouldn't expect it anything else um, that this book, was very researched in putting it together and she was very willing to talk about it with everybody which was awesome um yeah it after talking to her it made me really want to want to read the book i can't wait for you to uh read it when you're when you finish it let's have a conversation about it because yeah i love talking to people about this book that i've read it because i feel like every time i read it i find i, I pick up on something new have you ever done yeah. that I do. Um, and I also forget a few of them. Me too. <laughs> the me too. That's why I have to so, read things so many times. Yeah. Yeah. I got to say that name of the uh, Facebook group is Elvis find out what's happening then and now. And it's Sissy Lo Young. Okay. She's the admin. Yeah. I, I was just drawing a blank. And so <laughs> I do that quite often. Uh, I do that too. I do that too. <laughs> um, so you've heard the news, I'm sure. That Graceland you is are now having another child. Is that that news? What did you just say? You're having another child. Why do news? you always think I'm pregnant? Do you know you how are, old I am? Do I am, do I am I I've been losing weight, Johnny, so I don't think I look pregnant. Elvonathan, how is Elvonathan doing? <laughs> you are such like, a rumor starter. Like do you child. know the last time you said that I was pregnant with triplets? I had so many messages. <laughs> Because people just stopped listening after you said that, I guess. And they were like, oh, my God. How many people wanted to throw you a baby shower? That's awesome. Well, That's... I didn't, we didn't get that far because I nicked that in the bud really quickly. I would quickly. be getting flat screen TVs for the baby room. Yes. <laughs> oh, my Lord, Johnny. Okay. Let's go back to the big news, which is funny because I yes. had uh, David Ghostly Wills on my show. And we talked about... This very thing. And then like a week later, Graceland comes out with the news that they are going to have virtual tours. Yes. So what do you think is going to be in these virtual tours? Do you think we'll see some things that you wouldn't normally see if you went there physically? I would assume so. I would assume maybe one or two things. It probably won't be every hidden detail in there but because of the fact that it's video and there's so much video out there already pretty much see the house on youtube or where i think they would have to add a thing or two here or there that's going to make people say oh wow that was really worth it kind of like what we did with the tour you know we went on um we all left there excited thinking oh man we want to do this again so i would assume that they're going to add a couple of bells and whistles to it um, than other than what it is when you go through by itself. No, I would hope so anyway. Yeah. So are you going to buy a ticket to see it virtually? Um, since I have, I pretty much have everything memorized already. It feels like in the house I've been so much because I don't live that far away. Um, I might wait and hear what other people say about it first, uh, especially since I've been three times in the last um, since August already, <laughs> you know, yeah. I probably will, will wait a little bit. Um, so yeah, but I'm, I'm excited about it though. I want to hear 
uh, what people think about it for sure. Yeah. I have, as everyone who has been listening to my show for the past, for the past three years, know that I have never been to Graceland, had two trips planned, still have not gone, but I, even having not been there, I feel like I have the, the layout pretty much memorized, but that's not going to stop me from seeing it. And I don't think I would, do you think this virtual tour is going to be temporary or is it going to be something that they're going to have for the immediate future? I would expect as long as other countries are not allowed to come to the United States right now, it's really cutting into the tourism uh, for Graceland and not just Graceland, but Memphis, the United States yeah. uh, as well. I would think as long as until this pandemic thing is over and people are feeling safe to come back again, it's an alternative option, which I think it's great that they came up with that um, because you know, it, it goes both ways. People might lose interest a little bit in coming if, you know, if there's nothing new out there, uh, because I will tell you the time that we were there. In fact, the last three times I was there, there hasn't been hardly anybody there. Even when Elias and I had went, um, I don't know when that was, November, um, we were the, there was only two other people in the house on the tour with us. Um, and even in the uh, main ticket area, there was like 10 people in there, which on a normal summer, day, or, you know, normal day anyway, you might have 500 people in there m wow. mingling around or whatever. We pretty much had the place to ourselves, basically. Yeah. And so they're going to have to do something to increase sales. Um, and I think that's a good idea to, to continue the interest for it. Um, you know, the, I don't know what they'll do with the gift shops. Maybe they should add that to the virtual tour right afterwards. You yeah. Know, yeah. Give some links to some gift shop stuff because, you know, they have those at the end of each it's, museum. It's going to be interesting to see how, what they do as we move forward. Um, because I think, you know, we're entering a new norm, unfortunately. And it's going to be interesting to see how they compensate for that. Yeah. I mean, something has to be done. And at this point, I think in, they're just trying new things. I think that's a great idea, it though, is, to do that yeah. for people overseas that are not allowed into the U.S. Yeah. All right. Welcome, Matthew Pixley. He's a longtime uh, Jungle Room listener. Terry Wright, who is also here from Alaska. She's here. Terry, well, Terry wants to go to Graceland in person, so she's in Alaska. I'm in Alaska. We should just go together. <laughs> we should. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I just have to ask you, Johnny, you had all this private time um, touring the house. You know, I'm going to ask you, you didn't come away with anything, right? <laughs> I did not. And um, I did. We did talk. I asked the question, how often the carpets are replaced? Because I've always felt like you know, they've got to they've got to replace the carpet in there sometime. It cannot be the same carpet. Um, it's just it, it's not feasible that it would be. and. So I asked Angie about that, and she said that they replaced the carpet on the downstairs everywhere. The only carpet that is not replaced every five years or so in that time frame, just, a, you know, as an average, uh, the only carpet that's original would be that in the jungle room that's on the ceiling that they had put in the jungle room. Of course, Elvis sang in there, and it made great for acoustics. I don't think that's why they put it in there, but that is the only carpet that is original. Now, did you ask her where they purchased the the carpet? I did, I did not think about asking that question. Um, she did add, though, that that original carpet that was there when Elvis passed away, they still have. Uh, it's in a warehouse, and it's being treated uh, or protected, I should say, and with air temperature and moisture regulators and that kind of thing. So it's, it's well taken care of as is everything that was in the house when Elvis passed away. If it's uh, something original and it's not in the house anymore, it's in their warehouse and protected. They don't just get rid of anything like that. It's all taken care of. Oh, awesome, man. I can't wait to go. I'm super excited. Just, I would think if you've never been, the best times to go are during the birthday celebration and, of course, in Elvis Elvis week in August. Um, I mean, it's just as great if you go any other time, but there's so many events for a whole week's worth that 
uh, it would be so exciting. I, I wouldn't like you. I think you're going what in March. I think. Mm-hmm. You're, yeah. Well, that's the goal. It's March. I mean, hopefully, I can yeah. get out of here. <laughs> yeah, it, I think that would be a great time. Uh, also, because there won't be a lot of people still going, and you can take your time. Uh, if you, they offer the extra events and things though around those other two times of the year, and you can get to do a lot more. I would say it's worth it if you're going to get the, the I forgot what they call it, but the biggest package that allows you to like wear some of his jewelry or put his sunglasses on or hold them or you know that kind of thing. I think that is really worth it you'll go back home kicking yourself that you didn't pay the extra hundred dollars or 150 whatever it is Mm -hmm. oh Um, yeah i'm definitely going to do the the vip stuff for the first time um you know so so colin just mentioned that he wished he had discovered ashley drew's videos prior to his visit in 2015 and i feel like i'm so fortunate that i got to see a lot of ashley drew's uh videos especially you know, she was able to capture parts of Graceland that normally you wouldn't be paying attention to. I don't know if you've seen her video where she actually got to see what was in the laundry room. And things are like that, I'm fascinated. I want to see those types of parts of the house. I'm so weird. but Right, right. And I did ask Angie about the laundry room and the bathroom and those things. Um we she had already we were already upstairs in the jungle room while she was still downstairs with someone so um i was gonna ask about looking in there but i i didn't because i'd seen that but uh, a lot of people will do that they'll put their phones in the vent there's like these vent like things or under a door and take a picture and i actually did that probably 10 years ago in there. do you still have a picture too, so. Uh, no, it was it was on the earlier cell phones where the pictures didn't take. Uh, you could see like the edge of a sink and the ceiling. Uh, it wasn't a great picture. Um, but yeah, I know Ashley has done some videos on that. And it is pretty cool to look at those. I would recommend looking at the Hidden Gates of Graceland videos. Oh, too. I've seen all of them, like probably yeah. more than once. I There's something about the way Angie Marchese, she tells the story and she explains things. I really love her voice. I really love the the, the way she talks. I love it when they have videos with her talking. I, I don't know why. she's She's got a very calming voice. She is super nice also. Um, it's not like an act that she's putting on when you see her in her interview. She's just a sweet person. Uh, Tom Brown, super down to earth, nice guy, friendly guy as well. Um, and getting to just hang out with them. I mean, that's what it felt like. It was at nighttime. It felt like a home when we did the tour. And we were just hanging out in every room. I mean, they were pulling stuff out of the drawers in the dining room, showing us China and um, different things. We asked every question about everything that's in the room she went if we did she'd go over and show us what she could and um, bring stuff to us where we got close-up looks and took pictures um, I still have my white gloves from holding the of course you do. MRI sword you yeah. know so. I have to ask you Johnny did you ever think to ask Angie if she ever experienced any paranormal activity in the house I did not I didn't think about that I don't remember anyone else that's why asking did, well, did you have any kind of weird vibes when you're walking through the house at night? I mean, would you would you sleep in, at Graceland by yourself all night long? After taking the nighttime tour, I probably would. I mean, it just felt like I was at home. Of course, it granted, it felt I had the 70s kind of feel. Yeah. But it also, when you're there at night, it's just a whole different feeling. It felt like a home, especially like when we're standing in the kitchen area. Kitchen area and just hanging out in there and you can see the jungle room from one side the dining room from another the hallway it felt just like we were somebody's home um you know it was just such a, and I, it's hard to explain unless you're standing there because in the, i've been so many times in the daytime that it did it started to feel like a tour more than a yeah. or a museum more than a home but at night and maybe it was also because there was only six of us and it wasn't like we were hearing something okay and then you move on to the next room we were just sitting hanging out and then moving on to the next room and um and we'd hang out in there for about 15 minutes or 20 minutes or you know whatever it was it wasn't like you're there five minutes and then move on to the next room so maybe that had something to do with it um but the lighting is different um you know it's not so bright in there and 
it just felt more like a home. You you can actually sense Elvis walking around or all the stories you've heard about and seen on all the videos that everyone close to him has talked about kind of comes to life when you're there at night for some reason, more so than on the tour in the daytime. It was just such a surreal feeling. And we were all kind of in awe as we talked about that. We'd bring up other memories and things. We hung out in the TV room downstairs and they went and pulled out a lot of the albums, things that were in the drawers, showed us the drawers inside and um, which brought us all talking about other stories and asking questions and Tom telling us his favorite album in there and, and same thing with Angie and, and I, I thought it was cool because and you've probably noticed this in some of the videos that Angie just walks around barefoot yeah she does I noticed that I noticed yeah that. And it's you know what's like, interesting about Angie is that she started out as a tour guide when she was a teenager yeah and how cool is that that is That's- so cool really awesome that really is and um she's just so down to earth and really sweet uh, and she kind of treats it as her home and to her it probably it part partly feels like a home i guess because she's there so so often you know she's part of the people that come in and clean and organize and right i i if i ever get a chance to talk to her i'm going to ask her about the paranormal stuff olivia just chimed in and said didn't one of the cooks say she could always hear gladys's footsteps and Olivia says she wouldn't be brave enough to stay over. But I think even Priscilla had said when she first came over, if I remember correctly, there, there were weird noises. And like, and even Grandma Presley um, wouldn't go in the attic. Yeah. There's a lot of history with Graceland itself, even prior to when Elvis bought it. So if you believe in that sort of thing, I'm sure there's a lot of you know, weird sounds and yeah, wasn't there a murder or something before Elvis had moved in there? <laughs> somebody it? died. I'm serious. I think somebody Okay, so that's funny you say that because I don't know, did I tell you what I did to Elias? Yes. <laughs> I totally made that up. And so I thought so okay, let me tell everybody's gonna think I'm such a jerk. So Elias had never been to Graceland. Elias is a new Elvis fan and he was touring with, with Johnny. Johnny was Elias's tour guide for Graceland and apparently Elias was really hungry and he was wanting to speed up the the tour and I texted him this wild story about you know some murders happening back in the 1800s and I, I don't even remember what I said it was a long long tale and I was like make sure you tell Johnny he's going to be so impressed that you know all this stuff and <laughs> I guess he was too hungry to bring it up, and he didn't want the tour to last. He was freezing, I'll tell you that. It was in the low to mid-30s that day, and he was on tour, and so he just goes from a hotel to a church or somewhere to do his comedy, and he didn't have a jacket. And, because you know, he's from California. He didn't think about bringing a jacket. It was 70s, you know, out there when he left, and so he was freezing. He, was, oh, he had bet. a strong sleep sweater wow. on. I bet. Yeah. I bet. I how did he not know it would be cold in Memphis in November? I'm not sure. If only I'm we had sure. one of those things that we could like look up the weather in other states. Yeah. <laughs> oh goodness. Was that was that bad? Was it is it too soon? Like what? <laughs> there there we go. go. Thank you. Thank you. Oh man. Oh lovely. Nice. He's actually recovering. He, he got the COVID after he got back yeah, to he California, got the vid. not while he was in Memphis. Yeah, he got the yeah. Did you get tested after you found out that he was tested positive? I did. Okay. I did get tested. I stayed home from work uh, until I got a negative, which uh, Wait, three or oh, four days or whatever. Oh, were you positive at first? No, I was negative, but oh. they want, you know, oh, yeah, you can't yeah. say I feel fine or whatever. You have to yeah, actually you have to go get te- yeah, with no. my work. I have been tested yeah. so many times. I'm, you know, my nose is ex- starting to expect dinner first. That's how bad it's been. <laughs> I've like gone. There was one month I went every single week to get tested because I got, ex- you know, someone, someone down the line, apparently I was exposed. So th- with the job I have, once someone comes up positive, everybody has to go get tested. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those exactly. are fun. Good yeah. times. 
<laughs> I've gone twice and both times were different. The first time she barely, I could barely feel anything. The second time, man, they were like way up in there. Right, right. So when I first got the test back in March, it was like piercing my brain. But now <laughs> lately when I go, they, they just like, you know, it's just the tip. I mean, they just don't, you know, they go very, not very far up at all. So it makes me wonder why, like, did they just get better at it and realize they didn't have to torture us or? Yeah. And they have the pull up ones. Did you go to the, I go like through the free one. Yeah. I go to the free one. You don't even have to get out of your car. They just come to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Do you guys I, have I, that I, down there? Yeah. Uh, I wonder though, sometimes if it's just like, you know, a homeless man is out there and he's just like with a bunch of Q-tips and just pull on up right here. Pull on up. <laughs> I'm just imagining you like going down a driving down a dark alley somewhere and just seeing somebody with Q-tips and like, hey, can you hook me up with a COVID test? <laughs> like, like it's some kind of like you're having to do it because of some shortage of tests and you're going <laughs> underground. We'll swab for food. That's the new line right there. <laughs> oh my gosh um neil that is a great question why i don't have a money icon for subscribers to donate um you have to have a certain amount of subscribers and airtime and we just hit our thousand subscribers so i've done all the applications to get to that point so hopefully very soon uh we we can we can be up in that category where people can donate that would be awesome that Thank you awesome. for even asking, Neil. Thank you. Yes, I am so excited. And because I'm so excited, I think it's time to give away our $100 Visa gift card. Now, we, our longtime listener, Jessica Reynolds, she donated this Visa gift card for me to give away. And I spoke to her. And this was right before Christmas. And I said, you know, this would be a great thing to do once we get to 1,000 subscribers. And she was totally on board with that. So thank you so much, Jessica. Okay, here it is. Are you guys ready for the winner of the $100 Visa gift card, courtesy of Jungle Room listener Jessica Reynolds? All right. Do you have like a drum roll, Johnny, you can hook us up with? I don't okay. have a drum can roll. You use... I don't okay, I don't either. I, I can't, I can't roll my tongue either. Watch. I can't That's do as that. Much as I can't get. even whistle. I'm sad. Wait, I can do this. Here we go. That's very loud. That? All right. I could barely hear it, but it's cool. All right. The winner of a $100 Visa gift card, courtesy of Jessica Reynolds, is Amanda Hurtweck. Yeah. H E R T W E C K. I hope I said that last name correctly. Amanda, congratulations. Please email the Jungle Room at jungleroompodcast at gmail.com. We'll make sure to put that. In this description, Amanda Hurtwick, congratulations. And thank you again, Jessica Reynolds, for donating this gift card for us to give away. How nice is that? That is awesome. That is so Jessica. kind. And I was just, the oh, that was just such a sweet thing to do for us to, to be able to give away. And, you know, I said a little prayer. I, I, I hope this goes to to someone that was deserving and I, I feel confident that this young lady Amanda Hurtwick is deserving so yes I think we should give Jessica and Amanda both a sweet uh, a free swab a no swab for free for that yes Johnny there you go <laughs> oh my goodness okay see how, oh. Can't even, you, you get me all like verklempt I can't even like articulate my words it takes hard work to be this stupid. I can't even be mean when you say something like that. You're like, that's like the mother in me. I'm not stupid, Johnny. You just feel sorry for me. I get it. <laughs> I'm trying I to understand. boost your confidence. <laughs> Look at all your accomplishments. You woke up and I'm sure you made your bed this morning all by yourself. <laughs> Actually, I fell asleep on the couch last night. So, oh my gosh, I do too. I've been sleeping on the couch for the last three nights. I keep fall. I've been having some bad insomnia lately, and I don't want to keep the husband up. So I go to the living room and I lay on the couch, read or whatever, and then I fall asleep. I've just been dozing. I wouldn't even say it's sleep. It's just like this light doze. 
Uh-huh. I take I take all the sleep aids or not all just the really uh, a lot of melatonin. sleep aids, huh, Johnny? <laughs> Do we need to have an intervention? Yeah, my sleep melatonin, and then I listen to a voice message from you, and I just go, <laughs> I'm gone. Just so funny because when I want to fall asleep, I listen to your show. <laughs> <sighs> oh. Maybe I should try that. Maybe that. <laughs> I'll try I don't that. know. Talk to some of your guests. They said they had the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh man. Well, Johnny, this has been fun. I hope the next time we do this, we can actually have everyone see us because the whole point of me buying that camera was for that. Not that I like to, you know, be seen, but I did do this special beehive just for you, Johnny. I want to see the beehive. What do you have? What What are you doing right now? You want to do a quick 10, 15 minute live on the Jungle Room Facebook? Let's do it. I, 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 want to, I want to see it. All right, you guys, we're going to continue this conversation over on our Facebook group, the Jungle Room. Go ahead and join us over there. And we're just going to have a quick 10, 15 minute uh, conversation and see who joins us. Oh, and Johnny, Jennifer just said, to keep your swab. Keep my swab. Yeah. The swab, we... you know, the swab, you were joking about this, the COVID testing. Oh, keep, actually, okay, I was thinking she meant keep mine whenever I go get it tested for Ooh, a reason. It, you would keep, like, keep Why it. would I want to keep that? I don't think. Oh, my so. God. I think she was being, uh, yeah. I get it now. Yeah, I told right. you I'm a little slow. I got it. All right, you guys. All right, give us, like, just a couple of minutes and join us over on our Jungle Room Facebook group. And we'll go live for about 10 or 15 minutes. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And yay, thank you for helping us get to 1,000 subscribers. We can only go up from here. All right. I am Jamie Kay with the Jungle Room Podcast and YouTube channel brought to you by Sassy Girl Apparel. And my guest is Johnny Sanchez, the host of the Life and Laughs podcast. Johnny, tell everyone where they can hear you and Elias. You can log on to our website. It's Life and Laughs dot simplecast.com all right you and go. you can Got also all download well. the sleep aid app and you can listen <laughs> yeah. to the show on that yeah sleep aid app is the same life and laughs dot simplecast.com <laughs> all right you guys thank you again johnny thank you everyone and join us over at the facebook group talk to you soon bye-bye